actually going to go over the top four baits that you could use all year long. But we had a lot of rain today, had a lot of running around to do. I didn't get a chance to get all, all the baits together and do all that. So actually what we're going to do tonight is actually talk about the summer to fall transition, which is going to happen pretty quick. Um, a lot of guys wait until they get those real cold days where they're putting on their long sleeves and their hoodies and stuff like that. Look guys, it starts way before then. Um, anytime you start seeing your nights getting down into like the 60s when it's normally 70s, you know, or above, something like that. But the 60s, 50s and 60s, that's, that's your main key right there. And also, your day's getting shorter. The day's getting shorter is what your fish are really going to relate to. They're going to notice that before you will. Um, but some things you want to key in on when going to this transition is top water. Top water is very, very key when it comes to this. Um, you're going to talk like your walking baits are going to be your big ones. Um, anything that you can do towards the very top of the water for schools. Um, what's going to happen a lot of times is your main lake fish that have went out and they've spent their summer out deep, you're going to start seeing them busting schools of shad and stuff on top of the water out in the middle of the lakes. You're going to see a lot more in the mouths going into different coves or different arms, stuff like that. Um, main lake points you're going to start seeing that a lot on even secondary points stuff like that but that's your key to start looking for that's when those fish are really coming up and they're starting to get they're start wanting to start feeding so they come up they're hitting the top waters a lot they're busting real big schools of bait fish what i will tell you and the number one thing i look for is schools of bait fish when you get into that transition when it really starts taking off you're going to notice that if you key in on one big ball of bait out there that you can find, which usually isn't too hard, look for your birds. Birds are going to be around them. Your fish are going to be busting through them. As soon as you can find them, you're going to be on fish. You can stick with that school for pretty much most of the part of the day. Um, now, I'm not going to say they're going to bite all day, but you can definitely go there and stick around that school. You can throw your flukes, you can throw your top waters, you can throw your, like, your swim baits coming through there. Um, I've even went down to throwing rattle traps through there a lot of times and you know, just doing your yo-yo through that school and around that school, it works real well. Um, if you start to notice that bait school starts going down deeper water, like say you know, at night it got down to like 55 degrees, you know, it was a little cool. During the day it's getting back up to 80, 85 those bait fish might start diving down to get to a little bit cooler water at that time. If they do, that's fine. That's when you want to drop down to like the old throwing your crankbaits back to almost your summer pattern. Not quite, but a little bit. Um, either that or going with like a spoon. Um, a spoon works real well too. Uh, another thing that I'll throw a lot, you know, when I get into bigger schools like that, I'll even go to a half ounce spinner bait. Um, double willow blade. If I'm, depending on what, what, uh, what type of shad or bait fish you have in there, you know, you always want to match the hash. Keep that in mind. But you also want to stand out. You have to stand out of that crowd. Um, a lot of times I'll get, you know, a swim bait on the back of my spinner bait. Um, and I'll dive it the uh, tail chartreuse or I'll dive it blue or, or green or something like that just to make it look different than what all the other bait fish look like so it stands out. Um, as far as a uh, rattle trap, when you're going to throw something like that, if you've got, let's just say, bright silver-sided fish in there, you know, go with something like it's, it's a, like maybe white or a, uh, a darker blue or a darker green or something like that. Something that will stand out. You don't want to you don't want to match the hatch that close. And another thing to keep in mind is you want to go either bigger or smaller. Play with both of them. See which one gets bit. See which one to get bit a little bit more. Normally, if you're going with the bigger size, you're going to go with a little bit bigger fish a lot of times. Um, they're going to pick out that bigger bait. It's less, it's more of a meal at that one time, and it's less they have to beat up later and chase around. So, um, and guys, I will tell you, this is probably one of my favorite times of year. You know, you start getting your bait balls and stuff like that. They'll start pushing, the, the bass will actually start pushing all those bait balls to the back of the coves and stuff like that in real shallow flats. So, if that's happening, you guys can have a ball i'm telling you you can go back there um i said before you know some of my favorite top water baits are either the um the uh, sexy dog is one of my favorites um the spook that's another one of my favorites 
um, either one of those two baits right there, you can really go back into the back of these shallow coves and keep yourself out of weight quite a bit and just make long casts in there and just walk that bait back to you and you'd be surprised at the amount of fish and the quality of fish that you will actually pull to you. Um, because they're like I said, they're just they're running those bait fish back in there. They're wanting to school them up to where they're in the back and they have nowhere to go. Um, and at certain times during the day, you're gonna notice they're gonna start busting through all those bait fish. Um, they'll be hitting top water. They'll be running through them. You'll see, you know, fish cutting through the water real quick and stuff like that. And that's what they're doing is they're chasing the bait fish. So that's about all I got for the fall transit or the summer to fall transition, the start of it. Um, we'll go a little bit farther, more in depth with it once we get a little farther into it. I think we've got probably another month and a half before we hit that part. Um, but I will definitely go more depth, more in depth with that. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button, and I'll see you guys again. Thanks.